focus. So, welcome to the channel. Uh, I've been putting off making this channel for a long time now. Uh, there are two reasons for this. One is I have three kids, I have a wife, and I have my own business, StoryFlight, which I've been doing for a year and a half. The second one is that as we get older, and this applies to you too, because we're all getting older, especially you, not me, but as we get older, stuff happens to our skin. So this morning uh, I woke up, looked in the mirror, and I was like, you know, it's, I'm, I'm just gonna do it today. I guess this is okay. And I, I looked at my forehead and I said, are you gonna behave today? And it went, no. And then I got these red spots all over. Because apparently, uh, and this is the thing, I don't know why, when the weather changes in Norway, or if there's a cat sneezing outside, my skin breaks out. I have no idea. So I, I honestly went down and made the first recording uh, for this video. And I spent 45 minutes in DaVinci. I'm not proud of this, but I did it. 45 minutes in DaVinci putting up magic trackers on my face, reducing these colors that my skin has chosen to produce. And then I realized, I don't care. Listen, seriously, I'm doing this channel um, because I want to teach some things and I want to share some information. So if you worry about my skin, uh, you're probably looking at the channel for the wrong reasons. My name is Mick. I live in Denmark and I run this company called StoryFlight, which is my own company. And I've been doing it for almost a year and a half now. 90% um, of what I do is being done with drones, primarily FPV drones using um, GoPros or naked GoPros like this. Um, and then I also do regular drone work, uh, camera work, uh, cine lifter work and stuff like that. Um, the reason that I, I've been wanting to make this channel and, and also to kind of set expectations for what the channel is going to be about is that uh, I truly believe that mindset is more important than skill set. Um, what I mean by this is, well, let's take an example. You all see these videos on uh, Facebook where somebody's flying through a garage full of cars, but they're either flying so fast or doing, uh, you know, rapid turns so you don't get a good emotion from watching it. It looks, it looks like crap, honestly. Uh, or the footage is so widescreen that the cars go and just bend out of shape. Now, the reason for this happening, I think, is um, it could be a lot of things, but one of them is that the pilot could be nervous, which is very understandable. The other thing is just down to, you know, uh, them wanting to show off their pilot skills to other pilots. The problem is 99% of people watching those videos are not going to care about how good the pilot is. They want to have a story told in a beautiful way that has been nicely edited. And if there's somewhere along those steps are some surprises in terms of, you know, flying through something tricky or doing something cool, then that's brilliant. But that's the way it should go, not the other way around. And for that reason, um, I think that there's a gap in YouTube right now where there's a lot of channels out there that shows you how to become a better filmmaker and all of these things, but there's nothing really focusing on how to squeeze the best possible um, quality out of a GoPro camera or uh, showing you how you might be able to actually run a small business doing this. Um, you know, what does it take on the financial side? How much time does it take? What kind of gear do you need? Uh, all these things I think are very interesting and I think a lot of people really want this kind of info. So that's why I'm making this channel. Uh, I'm definitely not making it to get rich because this is just a waste of time, basically. And that brings me to our second thing about expectations. Now, this channel is going to be primarily about what I said, small sensor cameras, FPV drones, and, and how you can, you know, run a business from this. Um, but there's also going to be other things. I mean, I might build some Lego. I might play with my kids on camera. I, I don't know. Uh, I might do whatever I want because one of the things I realized before making this channel is if I'm going to make the channel, I'm going to do it my way. Um, and that means least amount of trouble and most amount of fun. So, so the most important thing though is participation from your side. If you like the channel, it would be lovely if you subscribed it and shared it to your thousand friends and have them subscribe. But the most important thing is comments participate in the channel. Go in the comment field, tell me what you want to know, tell me what you want to learn, or you know, um, give some constructive feedback, because this channel is made for you and not for me. So I really want to hear your opinion. Having said that, let's get started. Today we're going to do a, a pretty short tutorial about speed ramping in DaVinci uh, Resolve. Now, if you don't have DaVinci, 
don't be alarmed. First of all, it's free. You can get a free version or you can buy a studio version. The free version is basically just running off your CPU and not the GPU, so it's a bit slower. Uh, there's also some filters like denoising and other stuff you might be missing. And for some of the tutorials I'm doing, it will be a problem if you don't have DaVinci, but a large part of what I feel that I want to do with this channel is not only teaching how to do stuff, but it's also to making some of you think a little bit different about how you approach things. So while you might have Premiere and might not be able to follow a specific tutorial, I'm still hoping that the way I do it gives you enough reason to um, go into Premiere and attack the subject in the way that I have been telling you could be beneficial. I hope that makes sense. Let's get into it and let's begin. We're gonna cover some of the basics, but not all. Now, the first thing I've done is I've dragged in a clip. This clip, I right click and I select clip attributes. I wanna see what my frame rate is. So in this case, my frame rate is 100. Then I wanna create a timeline. So I right click, create timeline, and here I uncheck use project settings. I go to format, and this is one of the, the trickier parts. So well, not really, but if you don't know it is, here you would normally select the resolution of your file. Now my file is filmed in 4K, but there's no point in editing in 4K even if you have a big machine like I do. What you would rather do is select HD, and then you select the right timeline frame rate. The reason for this is now your computer is much less taxed when you're actually doing your editing, and once you've done all your editing, you can copy everything over to a 4K timeline. But it's gonna be so much easier for you rather than sit there and let the computer you know, show every last pixel. So we're gonna drag our 4K clip now into the HD timeline. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll through. Now, my machine handles this pretty good. Now, if your files are choppy and not uh, you know, smooth like mine, it's because GoPro films in H.264 or H.265. That means that um, all of your video file has been compressed to save space, and which is fine, but once you put it into DaVinci, that also means that it has to uncompress it every time you're scrolling through it. So in order to combat this, you can right-click here and select Generate Optimized Media. By doing so, uh, DaVinci actually unpacks the file on a, 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 in a you know, proxy folder, and it makes a file that is already unpackaged, and it uses that file while you're editing, which makes everything so much more smooth. And you might have to do this if you wanna do um, the things that I'm, I'm showing here. So let's pretend that you've done that. Now we're gonna trim the video file to what we wanna see and where we wanna go to. Let's see, we're right here, that's our ending. Now we have our little clip. So our little clip right here is going to have a beginning and an ending, of course. Uh, what I wanna do initially is I wanna highlight the clip and then I wanna press Control R, or you can right click and select Retime Controls. By pressing Control R or retime, uh, choosing Retime Controls, you get all of these small blue arrows and you get a black arrow down here where it says 100%. So down here, that means that this clip is now playing back at 100%. So 100% means that it's playing back at the correct frame rate for your file. This also means that that's the, that determines kind of the play area you have when you're speed ramping. If I was to go change speed to 10%, this would be very stuttery, as you see here. The reason is that everything below 25 FPS, our eyes are gonna view as being stuttery. So if we have 100 FPS in this file, and we wanna do 10% of that, that means that we're running at 10 frames per second, which is too low. If, on the other hand, we change this to 25%, that means we're running at 25 frames per second. And as you can see, it's gonna be baby smooth. Now, for our opening shot, we wanna, let's say we wanna, you know, go fast to the car and then pause for dramatic effect. I'm gonna choose 200% and we're then gonna scroll over here. Let's see, actually, we're gonna do a little faster. We're gonna do something like this instead. Like that. So we're gonna do 400% to here, then we're gonna add a speed point. At this speed point, we're gonna do 25%. So it's going to look like this. It's going to have this transition here. 
That transition means that it's going from 400% to 25% at this white line marker right here. Now, in order to combat this very abrupt stop, unless that's the effect you're going for, you're gonna right click your file and choose Retime Curve. There's a small dot here underneath our playhead uh, indicator. So if you click this dot, you can see we have a linear progression. Instead, you click over here and now you have a progression where you can control uh, the amount of time it takes for it to fade in and out from the two speeds. So right here where you see a small dot, um, it's going to go from 400% here and down to 25% over here, which means that it's actually going to go from 400 to 25 in the crossing of this playhead marker. And that looks like this instead. So now you have a much smoother landing, much more tolerable clip. If you want to make this transition shorter, you just pull it shorter, and then it's going to be like this. So now we're going to pull it out a little bit. We're going to stop our clip right here. Uh, actually, we're gonna look at the car for a little bit, and then typically you'd have some music that you would accompany this to, so you can do the speed ramps so they fit according to the music. But for now, it's gonna go like this, and then right here, we wanna speed it up again. Go over here, click the arrow, at speed point, and then we select, what is it we wanna do? Well, we wanna go 400%, because we wanna go really fast now. So we wanna go over here, let's say to a little bit more like this, and then we do add speed point, and here we're gonna go 25% again. And then we're gonna click the white dot down here, which is now red, and click the handles. And then because we're going at such a fast pace and we wanna slow down, we were gonna make these handles smaller. So what we have now is we have this, which looks very cool. And that's simply the theory behind speed ramping. There's um, a few other th tricks you can use for this which involves, um, well, let's let's do one of them actually. Let's put a playhead here. And right here where the playhead is, we're gonna do rewind, 50%. So what this does right now, actually, let's, let's just fix this because otherwise it's, gonna, it's not gonna be good. We're gonna now put 25% here, which is gonna speed up again because that's gonna make what I wanna show you so much better. So now we're going up to 100%. And then once we get, let's say here, here we want to do a rewind of 50%. So what happens is now that it actually made the file longer, look at what happens here. It begins playing at 100% and then it takes the, the amount of space you have left in the video. And once you get over here to this marker, it goes back. So you could of course also just pull this marker back and say, well, I want to do it right here. And then you go back, and once you hit this point, it's going to go forward again. You can adjust this as well. So we want to do a real fast effect. So let's do something like this. We also want to click these dots down here, make sure that they have these handles on them, so everything looks smooth. So you see me sometimes starting the clip over and over again like this. The reason I'm doing this is because I have something enabled called Smart Render Cache. That means that every time it runs past a new thing that I'm doing, it's building up a render cache to make it more fluent. So the first time I'm doing something, it's not gonna be that fluent, but the more I play it, the more fluent it's gonna be. And it's just a really fast way of actually viewing your stuff in real time without having to render it out. So once you're done with all of your speed ramping, you can press Control R and then you think you'd be out of it, but you wouldn't because you already, you, you, you're still in this mode here. In order to exit this, you can either click over here or you can right click and choose Retime Curve. So yeah, it's important once you're done with it that you just exit the whole thing. And that is essentially speed ramping 101. It, it isn't harder than that. The only uh, caveat you could uh, say to this, because there's, there, there are a few more layers to it. Um, one of them could be this. Let's say we have, um, let's, let's pull this out. Let's say we have a transition here. We want to go from here to, let's say here, okay? So now we pull these things. Now we have a 200% speed from there all the way over here. Okay, now we want to make this faster. So we want to make this part slower. We want to make this transition faster so we go 400%. But as you can see, it's, it's still taking some time. Maybe we want to do like a really fast swoop 
we do 800%. That's pretty fast. But if we want to go faster than this, what you can do is actually, and this uh, this is something I've used a few times. Um, there's several ways of doing it, but let's just do one of the ways. You have your 800% set. So you position the playhead on top of the line here. Then you press B in order to cut, and you cut it. Then you mark the clip again, and you press Control R. Place your playhead marker on top of the other one. Press B, you cut, and now you have this clip as an independent clip. So if you're playing the whole thing back, it's still going to look like it did before. But once you have this clip right here, you can right click it and choose new compound clip. So speed ramp uh, compound. So once you have a compound clip means that it's taking every change you've made in this clip, including color grades and everything, and just sort of baking it into a clip. And the reason you would do this is that you can now on top of this make a new speed ramp. So I can, on top of this, make a new speed ramp where I say, this one is going to go 400% faster. But remember, that's 400% on top of 800%. So what's going to happen is that it's going to do this instead. Now it's actually going to be the kind of swoop I wanted it to be, if that makes sense. And if you ever want to get back inside your clip, you can right click it, right -click it and choose Open in Timeline. And there you have your clip. So there you have it, that's speed ramping in DaVinci 17. This is typically how I do like 95% of all my speed ramps. Um, speed ramping is a lot of fun, but you should be aware that once you do speed ramps, your machine might get sensory overload very, very fast. So for that reason, the whole enable smart render cache is really, really useful. Um, because it allows you to sit there and fine-tune on some settings and once you do that just keep on playing that little bit like three, four, five, six times and then suddenly it's gonna be really smooth and it's gonna stay smooth and baked in until you change something in it. And regarding speed ramps it's really important to actually make sure you see everything completely fluent. So if your machine is lagging or it's choppy, reduce the timeline to HD, um, enable smart render cache and then make sure you generate optimized media. So I hope all of this makes sense and I hope you can use it for something. And I do hope that you take the time to leave a comment and you know, just talk about what is it you wanna see the next time um, because that will be valuable not only to me, but to the rest of the community. So thanks guys, I hope to see you next time, bye.